good. Good. So do you want to introduce me or should I just start off? Well, I'll introduce you. I'd be happy to. So I met Rhonda. Oh, geez. Where did I meet you? Probably at Bernina University this last summer. I think in so. In Palm Springs. Yeah. So I booked Rhonda. She's very much in demand. And we had her for our virtual quilt retreat last month. And she was such a hit. And everybody said they learned so much. So I asked her to do it again for a new group. So thank you to everybody who signed up for this free event. Um, and I'll ask everybody to please mute. You should be able to find your mute button in the lower left-hand corner. Unless you're on an iPhone or a tablet, then I don't really know, but you'll see it. Um, and I can probably mute a few people here that I see that are not muted. There we go. Okay, so we'll see if other people tune in. I emailed last night, um, just waiting for the last minute people to sign up. So everybody got the Zoom link last night. Okay. So welcome. Well, thank you. And I'm excited because look at my background. I have two new um, banners. <laughs> And I just put those up yesterday. So you're the first to see them. <laughs> so I'll be using those at some of the uh, shows that I'll be going to later, later in the season. So I guess I'll go ahead and get started then. Please do. Hello, everyone. I'm delighted to be here today. My name is Rhonda Pierce, and I love to sew, I love to quilt, and yes, I love Smith's needles. <laughs> My presentation today will be about 45 minutes, and um, as questions pop up, I encourage you to go ahead and type any questions into the chat. I'll try to uh, monitor that, and I'm sure Pam will too. So my talk today is in three sections. I'm first gonna talk about the physical properties of the needle. Then I'll move into uh, specific needle types for piecing uh, and quilting, sewing with knits, et cetera. And then I have a mystery question, a question I'm pretty sure that you ask yourself uh, quite a few times. <laughs> so what's my mission here today? Well, it's threefold. Uh, my mission is to elevate your respect for the hardest working two inch piece of steel in your sewing machine, the Smets needle. I'm hoping to remove any mystery you might have about the needle, especially all those little numbers, and increase your confidence in your needle selection. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have my Smets Super Demo Needle. This is 17 inches tall and anatomically correct. And yes, pre-pandemic, I was always traveling with this. And I'm still, well, I'm starting to travel again in person now too. So um, my luggage is always inspected by TSA. But I wanna start with um, the parts of the needle because I believe if you're aware of the parts of the needle and their function, it helps you make an informed decision as to what needle type and size to use. So let's start at the very top of our needle. Now my needle's mounted on a little um, display uh, wood block, but I think even virtually you can see the very top of the needle. This is a beveled edge and it's referred to as the butt of the needle. And you might think, yeah, so what? What's that mean to me? <laughs> well, stop and think about it. When you go to insert a new needle, you don't have a lot of wiggle room. So the top of the needle is beveled for easier insertion into your needle holder. Our home sewing machines require a flat shank. 99% of all of our home sewing machines require a flat shank, again, for perfect positioning into your needle holder. We have a little transitional area referred to as the shoulder of the needle. And I hope you've noticed that your Smets needles have either one or two bands of color. And we'll talk about those color bands shortly. 
we have the length of the needle, which is referred to as the blade of the needle. And the size of the needle is actually based on the size of the blade. So Smex being a German company, they measured this area here of the needle using the metric system. So they'll get a measurement like 0 0.70, 0 0.80, et cetera. They take that number times 100 to come up with the sizes that we're familiar with. Sizes 70, 80, 90, et cetera, are based on an actual measurement of the needle blade. So I hope explaining that helps you understand that a size 90 needle is going to be larger than a size 70 needle. Again, the size is based on an actual measurement of the, the blade. On the front of your blade, how many of you have noticed the groove of the needle? You can actually see and feel the groove on your little two inch piece of steel. But what's the purpose of the groove? The groove is going to cradle your thread so it moves evenly and smoothly down the length of the needle to the eye. So you get a nice clean stitch. Your thread when you're sewing should not be flip flopping back and forth. Again, it should be cradled by the groove so you get a nice clean stitch. We have the point and the tip and these change according to different needle types. And on the back side of your needle, how many of you have noticed this little indentation above the eye of the needle? This is referred to as the scarf of the needle. And the scarf has a very important function. When your needle passes through your fabric and your throat plate, the bobbin hook has to come up and catch that top thread in order to create the stitch. So the bobbin hook needs a passing room. So that's why this little area here is carved out so the um, hook can catch that top thread in order to create the stitch. And the scarf, the depth, the width, and the length will change according to different needle types. And um, yeah, so those are your basic parts of the needle. Now, let me just share my screen here. And here's an even better image of, the, of your needle. You've got the butt, the shank, the shoulder, the blade, the groove, the point, the tip. And I haven't mentioned the eye yet. And I consider the eye to be one of the most important features to your Smets needle. Your everyday needle, the universal needle, the eye is 40% the width of the blade. But look at the eye of the embroidery needle and you can see that the eye is wider. And when you look at the eye of the top stitch in the metallic, you can see that the eye is not only wider, but also elongated. So when you're sewing, what does a larger eye mean to you? A larger eye means there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. So if you have problems with threads that are breaking or shredding, well, what are you gonna do? Well, you need to change your needle. And you may need to move up a needle size or change to a different needle type that has a larger eye. So I hope I've solved a little situation. We sometimes encounter threads that break or shred. What are you gonna do? Yeah, you need to change your needle. Next, let's talk about the, um, the Smets needle, um, needle chart. I hope you've noticed that there are either one or two bands of color on your Smets needles. And you can kind of date some of your Smets needles by the two color bands, which were instituted in 2014. So let's look at the chart here. On the left-hand side, um, the column is labeled needle type. And you'll see all of the different Smets needle types and many are assigned a specific color. On the right-hand side, the column is labeled needle size, and you see all of the different needle sizes, and there is a color assigned to each um, size. Now look at the needle between the two columns. The top color band identifies your needle type. So on this sample here, the top color band is yellow. So what kind of needle is this? Well, we look off to the left under needle type and we find yellow is a stretch needle. Back to our needle, 
The lower color band identifies your needle size. So on this sample here, it's a pink. So we look off to the right under needle size and we find pink is size 7511. Well, let me walk you through a couple other examples. My favorite go-to needle for all kinds of sewing, piecing, quilting, et cetera, is a Microtex size um, 8012. So what would the two color bands be? Well, for Microtex, we look off to the left under needle type and we find Microtex is purple. And for size 8012, we look off to the right under needle size and we find 8012 is orange. So Microtex size 8012 will have a top color band of purple and a lower color band of orange. One more example would be what needle type and size would I have if I have two bands of orange? Two bands of orange. So we look off to the left under needle type and we find orange is a jersey needle. And again, we look off to the right under needle size and orange is size 8012. So two bands of orange would be a jersey size 8012 needle. Now, on the color chart, there's one more thing I need to point out. And that's the very first needle listed under needle type, and that's universal. And there's no color assigned. In fact, the box is actually X'd out. So what does that mean? Universal needles will have only one band of color, and that's to identify your needle size. So if you have a universal size 8012 needle, well, you have just that single band of orange. If it's a universal size 9014, you, it's just a single band of blue. So I hope this METS color chart helps you identify your needles, especially after you've taken them out of your needle pack. Okay, so next let's look at um, the actual little packs that your needles come in. There's lots of numbers and letters there. So starting at the very bottom of this pack, I think most everyone recognizes needle size or needle sizes. On this pack here, we have assorted sizes. So we have sizes 7010, 8012, and 9014. So that's your needle size. But above the needle size, how many of you have looked at that 13705H and wondered, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> 130 slash 705 means is the needle system. 130 slash 705 means that the needle has a flat shank. The H translates from a German word that means scarf, that little indentation on the backside of your needle um, above the eye. Needle system 130705H is used by 99% of all of our home sewing machines. You might think of um, needle system as a model number. There are over 7,000 different needle systems in the world. So every day I just say thank you because... <laughs> 99% of all of our home sewing machines use needle system 130705H, making our job a little bit easier. So take a look at that number there. Above your needle system, you've got the needle type spelled out. So these are universal needles. Above that, you've got the SMETS name. And above that, through the clear packaging, you can see the color codes. So we learned that universal needles have only one band of color to identify the needle size. And this pack here has assorted sizes. So let's look at those colors. The two needles on the left-hand side have that single green band for size 7010. The next two needles to the right have orange bands for size 8012. And the needle to the far right has that single blue band for size 9014. So uh, universal needles have only one band of color to identify your needle size. But let's look at one more needle pack. Again, at the bottom of your package, you currently see the needle size. So these are size 9014. 
Above that is our needle system, 130705H. So we know that this is a flat shank needle with a scarf that we can use in our home sewing machine. But look at that needle system just a little bit closer. Because on this pack here, there's an additional letter, a dash E, E for embroidery. On some of your other needle packs, you might find a Q for quilting or J for jeans or M for microtex, et cetera. So lots of information on your needle system line. Above that, we've got the needle type spelled out. So these are embroidery needles. Um, above that, even today, sometimes you'll still see the German word for needle. You've got the Smets name above that. And again, above that, through the clear packaging, you can see the color codes. So on each of these needles here, um, the top color band is red, red for embroidery. And the lower color band is blue, blue for size 9014. So lots of information on your little Smets needle pack. In fact, if you stop and think about it, there's redundant information. So if you've got any questions about um, the size, the needle system, the color code, et cetera, go ahead and just put that um, in, in the chat. Okay, and current, ooh, let's see, I guess I better open up my chat, but I don't see any questions yet. Let me move that off to the side. Okay, so let's just scoot along here. Um, because I want to ask you, what do you think the most popular needle type is? And I bet most of you would um, answer correctly. The most popular needle type is a universal needle. The universal needle has a slightly rounded point. It works well with both woven and with knit fabrics. The universal needle also is available in the widest range of sizes, from the smallest size 60 slash 8, all the way up to a size 125. Plus, the universal needle is available in twin and triple needles, too. And what do you think the most popular needle type and size is? Universal size 8012 followed by universal size 9014. So no matter what kind of sewing, piecing, quilting you do, I always suggest that you have universal size 8012 and 9014 in your needle stash. But let's talk today about five popular needle types for piecing and for quilting. And universal. Lots of people like to use the universal needle for piecing and for quilting. In fact, a lot of famous quilters like to use the universal for piecing and for quilting. But let's look at four other needle types popular for piecing and for quilting. We've got the jeans needle. Does that surprise you? Well, how many of you like to make jeans quilts or flannel quilts or those we both live or we all live in cold climate. So we like those heavy duty raggy quilts too. And when you're going through all those lead, uh, layers, you need um, a hardy needle. And the jeans needle, also known as a denim needle, is up to the task. So what's so special about the jeans needle? The jeans needle has a reinforced blade. A reinforced blade so that when your needle passes through your denser or heavier fabrics and the throat plate, there's less needle deflection, less movement of the needle so you get a cleaner stitch. So the jeans needle has that, um, the reinforced blade. Another needle popular for piecing and for quilting is the top stitch needle. And as we saw earlier, the top stitch needle has that elongated eye. So there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. The top stitch needle has a slightly rounded point. Another needle, well, just as the name suggests, is the quilting needle. You can use this needle for both piecing and for quilting. What's so special about the quilting needle? It has a special taper 
specifically engineered for piecing and for quilting, a special taper. This needle also has a slightly rounded point. So it's available in two sizes. So you'd probably use the smaller size 7511 for the actual piecing of your project and the larger size 9014 for the quilting of your project. And that leaves one other needle type popular for piecing and for quilting, and that is the Microtex needle. The generic name for a Microtex needle is a sharp needle. Okay, so what's that mean? The Microtex needle has a very slim acute point. Very slim acute point. So with the Microtex needle, you're going to get the most precise stitches. And because the Microtex has this very slim acute point, guess what? The Microtex needle is going to dull quicker than any of your other needle types. So you will need to replace your Microtex needle more frequently than any other needle type. The other thing I want to mention about the Microtex needle is, well, how many of you like to sew, piece, or quilt with batik fabrics? I love batik fabrics. And even if you pre-wash your batik fabrics, oftentimes they're still tightly woven and can still have um, dye residue. But the Microtex needle can just stitch beautifully through your batik fabric. So anytime you're working with batiks, I always recommend a Microtex needle. So if you're taking notes here today, Five popular needle types for piecing and for quilting. We've got the universal needle, the workhorse of all needle types with a slightly rounded point available in the widest range of sizes. We have the jeans needle, which has that reinforced blade, which is terrific when you're working with um, denim quilts or, or denim of any kind, uh, uh, flannel quilts or those heavy duty raggy quilts. That jeans needle with the reinforced blade means there's less needle deflection, less movement of the needle when the stitch is created. We've got the top stitch needle, which has that elongated eye. So there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. We've got the quilting needle, specifically designed for piecing and for quilting. It has a special taper. You'd probably use the size 7511 for the piecing of your project and the size 9014 for the quilting of your project. And last but not least is the Microtex needle with that very slim acute point. So you get really precise stitches. It's great to use when you're sewing on batiks. And remember, because it has that slim um, acute point, you're going to have to uh, replace your needle more frequently than any other needle type. Now, you can buy all of these as single cards, or guess what? Pam has these already bundled up for you as a special for being here today. So these are already bundled up, and it comes with a handy little laminated luggage tag. And I will say, now that I'm traveling again, I'm using this luggage tag. But if you have an extra one, hang it in your sewing room or put it on your sewing machine. Plus, the bundle comes with our Little Smets ABC Pocket Guide, which is the foundation to today's class. So everything you need to know about needles is right here in the ABC Pocket Guide. And I'll walk you through this guide um, later. This is more than just promotional material. This really talks about each type of needle and their special features. And there's a lot of additional information in there too. Okay. So next, let's talk about um, sewing with knits. Um, when I first learned, uh oh, what happened? Am I missing? There we go. Okay, when I first learned to sew I, with knits, no, now that I think about it, when I first learned to sew, it was on double polyester. Anybody remember double knits, double polyester? <laughs> Well, knits have come a long way, and uh, wow, we've got so many more varieties of knits, and the quality is much, much better. And part of the success of sewing with knit is um, using the appropriate needle. So 
So let me walk you through two needle types that you must have when you're sewing with knits. And the first is the jersey needle. The jersey needle has a medium ball point. And in fact, the um, generic name for a jersey needle is a ballpoint needle. The other needle that you want in your stash when sewing with knits is a stretch needle. And guess what? When you compare this needle to a jersey needle, it too has a medium ballpoint. But the stretch needle has a narrower eye and a deeper scarf. So now your stitch experience is just a little bit different when you compare it to the jersey needle. So if you're sewing up with knits, well, how do you know? Do you use a stretch or a jersey needle? Well, there's a rule of thumb that works 80% of the time. If you're working on a knit fabric that has a lycra, spandex, or elastic, you're going to use the stretch needle. If it's just a regular knit fabric, you're going to use the jersey needle. Sometimes stretch and jersey are interchangeable, but not always. So it wasn't so long ago that I was making a little cotton t-shirt for myself, and it had 3% lycra. So what needle did I use? Yeah, I always use the stretch needle anytime I've got lycra or spandex. But that one time, I didn't like my stitch quality. So what did I do? I just switched to a jersey needle and I got the stitch quality that I expected. So again, that 80-20 rule, yeah, it works 80% of the time. So again, the rule is, if your fabric has light bra, spandex, or elastic, you're going to use the stretch needle. If it's just a regular knit fabric, use the jersey. And sometimes they're interchangeable. So don't be afraid to um, switch them out. So um, again, these needles are available as single cards at Pam's shop, or she did bring in a special for you today. And you can get um, these already bundled up. So the jersey has assorted sizes, 70, 80, and 90. And the stretch, we've got a single card of size 75, 11, and the 90, 14. So these are already bundled up for you. Again, with the little handy uh, luggage tag and the ever popular Smets ABC pocket guide. So if, you're, um, if you've been, oh, you know what? The other thing I wanna mention about the, um, the stretch needle is, how many of you like to sew with cuddle fabric or minky? I love sewing with cuddle and minky. And sometimes it's kind of a finicky um, fabric to, to sew on. So you do need to practice a little bit, but part of the success of sewing with minky and with um, uh, um, um, oh gosh, cuddle fabric is using the appropriate needle. And that is a stretch size 9014. Um, even Shannon Fabrics that manufactures Minky and Cuddle Fabrics suggests, um, recommends Stretch 9014. So if you're new to um, Minky or uh, Cuddle Fabric, you need to overpin. When I work with uh, Cuddle Fabric, I overpin. I have my pins going vertical or parallel to the edge of the um, fabric, but I also have the pins going uh, perpendicular. So there's less sliding, less movement of the fabric while I'm sewing. And yes, the needle is going to make a huge difference. So again, um, uh, Pam has these already bundled up for you. So you'll wanna get your hands on that little bundle. All right, so let's talk about the newest needle that was introduced right before the pandemic. So if you don't know about this needle, don't feel bad because that's why I'm here today to help keep you informed as to what's available and what the special features are. <clears throat> so the newest needle in the line is the Super Nonstick Universal Needle. And I think even virtually, you can see that these needles are a different color. They're kind of a gunmetal color or charcoal gray, and that's the anti-adhesive coating. 
But these needles also have a couple other special features that I want to um, point out. The needle has an extra large eye. So there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. This super universal needle also has a reinforced blade. So when your needle passes through your specialty fabrics, there's less needle deflection, less movement of the needle when your, um, your stitch is created. So three great features about this needle, anti-adhesive coating, extra large eye, and a reinforced blade. When are you gonna use these special needles? Well, how many of you like to do machine embroidery or machine applique? Especially when you're working with those sticky stabilizers or adhesives. And what do they do? Yeah, eventually they gum up your needle. So this um, non-stick needle will, will resist the adhesive from gumming up your needle. If you like to make multimedia quilts, and oftentimes you're working with different fabrications and maybe um, fusible sprays or adhesives, this is a great needle to, to use. If you like to sew on oil cloth or splash fabric, this is a great needle to use. And what about vinyl? When you sew on vinyl, what happens? The vinyl gets warm and then it has a tendency to hug your needle. <laughs> so the super nonstick is a great needle choice when you're stitching on vinyl. And one last application for the super nonstick is when you're working with um, uh, Velcro or hoop and loop tape, because you know that product is kind of odd. It's kind of sticky on one side. Uh, gooey on the other and crispy on the other side. So the super nonstick can go through all of those layers. So super nonstick, fantastic needle, the newest addition to the line. And wow, it has become very, very popular over the last two years. So this needle is available in four sizes, sizes 70, 80, 90, and 100. And yes, Pam has these already bundled up so you can experiment with them and find out which one is your favorite size for your type of stitching. It comes with the handy little luggage tag and again with the um, ABC pocket guide. So um, I'm excited about these needles. We're getting lots of great um, responses about them. Okay. And um, I know that there's people who like to also do machine embroidery. So I want to touch upon um, machine embroidery needles too. Well, I already mentioned that the super nonstick is great for machine embroidery. It has that reinforced blade. It has the extra large eye. So there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle and um, the uh, reinforced blade. So great features for the nonstick, great for your um, machine embroidery. Other um, options for machine embroidery? Well, we've got our classic um, embroidery needle. And guess what? This needle also has that extra large eye, so there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. And there's also requests for titanium. So yes, Metz has one tech currently one titanium nitrate um, uh, a needle for embroidery. So sometimes we refer to this needle as the Smith's Gold Embroidery Needle. So these needles are available in size 75 and um, size 90. So why have um, different types of embroidery needles? Well, you know, sometimes our machines have personalities, our threads might have personalities, our fabrics might have personalities, and we work on different types of projects with different techniques. So it's good to have a variety of um, needle types and sizes. So you can experiment to find out which type of needle is your favorite. So again, Pam has these already bundled up. It's a great sampler. Think of it as a sampler. Um, with, again, the luggage tag and the ABC pocket guide. So um, take advantage of that special pricing that Pam has for you. Whew, we have just covered a lot of needles. <laughs> if you've got any questions about a specific needle, go ahead and put that in the chat. Meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and scoot along.
let me just share my screen because I'm going to ask, what do you think the most popular question um, is that I'm asked, the most frequently asked question? And I'm guessing you have asked that question too. And that is, how long does a needle last? Well, here's the easy answer. They certainly don't last forever. And your needles should never, ever look like these. These are really super nasty looking needles that have been overused and abused. That needle on the left-hand side, well, it looks like it has twin mountain peaks. That needle on the far right, it looks like a cutting blade. So what are these needles going to do to your fabric? Yeah, they're just gonna eat up your fabric. So that is not a good thing. They're gonna compromise your stitches. So the needle is not a permanent machine part. You do need to change it out. This um, frame here is one of my favorite because this needle has been used and over, overused and abused, but it's the same needle in every frame. It's just been magnified increasingly as you move to the right. So um, that first frame on the left-hand side, it looks like a sharp needle with our, our naked eye, right? But as you move to the right, you can see, oh, <laughs> yeah, that needle really has been overused. And when you look at the frame on the far right, you can see, oh, my goodness, it is really super dull. It's got that super burr, that super lip right there at the very tip. And look at all those burrs and striations on the tip. So. Again, this needle um, is going to compromise your, your fabric and your threads and your stitch quality. So what are you gonna do? Change out the needle. So yeah, needles get dull with use. And I'm not here today just to sell you more needles, but really I want you to have a quality sewing experience because stop and think about it. You've spent a lot of money on your beautiful machine or machines. I know there's people in there with more than one or two machines. <laughs> you spent a lot of money on your curating your fabric stash or stashes. You spent a lot of money on your beautiful threads. You've spent a lot of money on books, patterns, lectures, retreats, uh, kits, etc. And let's not forget your time. Your time is an investment. So let's complete that investment cycle from your machine to um, your fabric, your threads, your time, et cetera. Let's complete that cycle right down to the hardest working two inch piece of steel in your machine. It does not last forever. <laughs> that is your Smets needle. It's also the least expensive part to your machine, so um, you just need to, to ch uh, change it change it out. So that brings up, well, how long does the needle last? I have no idea. Um, I know people like to say six to eight hours, and yeah, that's probably true, but let's stop and think about it. If you start with a fresh uh, needle and right off the bat, you hit a pin, well, what, what just happened? Well, I know the first thought is that you just bent the needle and it's very possible that you did, but I guarantee what you just did is you just compromised the point and the tip of your needle. So what are you gonna do? Change out your needle. Um, maybe you can get 20 hours of sewing time. Maybe you're not a very aggressive sewer and it's kind of loosely woven. Maybe you can get 20 hours, I don't know three seconds, 20 hours, that's quite a spread. So people average it out to six to eight hours of sewing time. But what I, have you ever tried to time yourself sewing? It's impossible, <laughs> especially with smartphones, you know, because now we get interrupted by mail and phone calls, et cetera. So I think while you're sewing, you need to reframe that question from how long does the needle last to what are the clues to changing out your needle while you're sewing? And we touched upon that one uh, clue already, and that's when your thread is breaking or shredding. And what you may not know is that if you're not changing your needle frequently enough, the thread will actually wear a groove in the eye of the needle. And that's not a good thing. 
a groove in the eye of the needle, what's it gonna do? Break and shred your thread. So what are you gonna do? Change out the needle. What's while you're sewing? What's happening to your fabric? Are you le leaving holes? Is the needle eating up your fabric? <laughs> is it making a punching sound when the stitch is um, made? Is um, um, in a really bad case, the needle is actually pushing the fabric into your throat plate. Well, hello. Those are all clues that you need to do what? Change out the needles. And what's happening to your stitch quality? Yep, I think most of us are aware when you've got skipped stitches, that's a clue that you need to change um, your, your needle. But if your seams are uneven, again, if your stitches are skipping, or maybe you're sitting at your machine and you're saying, well, Rhonda, you know, I'm sewing in a straight line, but my stitches look kind of wiggly squiggly. Well, what, what's going on? Well, your needle is dull. So what are you going to do? Just change out the needle. And there's one other clue that you need to be aware of. When you're sewing, hopefully you're in that bubble, right? And you are just hum, hum, humming along. And then you start to hear that little click, click, clicking sound. Well, what is that? It's your needle and it's saying, hi, I've been working hard here. Change me. <laughs> If you ignore that clicking sound, then it graduates to a pop, pop, popping sound. Now it is begging you, change me, change me, change me. If you ignore the clicking and the popping, now what's happening? Your machine is making that clunk, clunk, clunking sound. <laughs> and that's not a good thing. And I know your first inclination is to think, oh my goodness, something is wrong with my machine. You know what? You can take your machine into the technician, but guess what? What's the first thing that they're gonna ask you? Hey, when's the, when's the last time you changed your needle? So save yourself that fee and just change out your needle. So I'm not here today just to sell you more needles, but really I want you to have that um, successful sewing um, experience. Okay, so uh, any questions? Oh, you're so quiet today. All right, well, let me just scoot right along. Uh, I've got a few more slides to show. And so I wanna show you where you can get lots of free information. First of all, I want you to go see uh, Pam at Time Flies. Um, she's got lots of information and she's got those bundles with the ABC Pocket Guide. But right here is smetsneedles.com. And I want you to look at the top here and you'll see resources. When you click resources, this is what you're going to find. Lots of free resources. You can download that Smets ABC pocket guide yourself, but it's not gonna be as cute as the one that Pam has in, in her store. So you wanna get your hands on that. You can also download the color chart, but again, it's not going to be as cute as that little laminated uh, color chart that um, Pam has for you. You can also go to the resources page uh, right from the home page. When you just scroll down, you'll see this and you can click for um, your needle needs. What does that mean? Well, it's an app. It's a free app that you can download on your phone. It is the Smets ABC pocket guide that is in the free app. So all of the um, images, all the content you've seen here today is in that free app. It's also in the Smets ABC Pocket Guide that you can download right onto your phone or to your website or your, um, your desktop. But there are a couple other features that I really love about the free app. It has needles by fabric type. So there's over, I don't think there might be a hundred, almost a hundred fabrics that are listed alphabetically. So you can go in and take a look um, at a, a different type of fabric and it'll suggest what needle type and size to use. So I recently updated it. So it includes bamboo and cork. What needle do you use? Well, now you can go in and find out for yourself. And there's the Smith's color chart. The other thing that's in the uh, free app is um, there are links to different thread companies. So you can go to your favorite thread company and it goes right to the, um, the needle 
uh, the pairing of the thread with the needle type, just to make it a little bit easier for you. So all of this is free, just download um, the app. Okay, well, let me just do a quick wrap up. So I'll be done with the slides. My name is Rhonda Pierce. I represent SMET's Home Sewing Machine Needles in North America. I do have a personal blog also, sewmorestitches.com. I only post a couple times a week. Now that I'm starting to travel again, um, like I was in um, Atlanta for Quilt Con. That was February, right? So I've got pictures from that. I also, um, in early March, I was in Puyallup, Washington for the Sewing and Stitchery Expo. So I've got pictures from that. And I've got quite a few more. Um, well, actually, I've got 16 trips planned for this year. So <laughs> it's going to be a crazy, um, a crazy year. So if you see me at a sewing or quilting show or at a retreat, Tell me what is your favorite Smith's needle type and size? I always love to, to know. So again, I wanna thank Pam for bringing me in here today. And you are so fortunate to have Pam in your local community, not only to learn from, but um, to um, service your machines and to inspire you to, to sew and quilt and create other projects. So. Let me stop my share here. You know, one of the questions that I'm frequently asked, we talked about, um, you know, how long does the needle last? Well, I know that in the real world that sometimes we juggle projects, right? So maybe you're working on, um, you're piecing a quilt right now. And then, oh, you want to make a little t-shirt for um, a youngster. So, and you're switching fabric. So you've gone from cotton, a cotton woven, and now maybe you're working with a cotton with, um, let's say, 3% spandex. So you're going to change your needle, right? How do you keep track of your, um, but that quilting needle is still sewing worthy. How do you keep track of that needle easily? You can set it off to the side, right? And then you can hunt for it after your t-shirt is done, right? <laughs> Or here's a handy little tool that you can use. This is called the Grab It My Pad, and Pam has these in the store. This is a great way to organize your slightly used needles. I use this myself. I've got lots of needles in the different um, slats. Let me tell you how this works. So um, this is an extra thick piece of uh, felt. And then um, I updated this last year. So now all Smets needle types using the Smets color codes are listed here, along with a cell for all the different sizes of your needle. So now for your slightly used needles, you're just going to slide your needle right into the appropriate needle type and size. The Grab It My Pad also comes with a little flower head pin. So if you have some older Smets needles that don't have the, um, the color codes, once you take that needle out of the package, use this flower head pin to identify the needle currently in your machine. Just slide the flower head pin into the appropriate needle type and size. So it's a great way to, um, you, well, you don't have to rely on your memory now. <laughs> so um, I'll tell you that last, uh, the last Christmas, not the most, oh, uh, not this Christmas, the previous one, my my pad was full of slightly used needles. So um, let's see, I, do, I don't think I traveled then last, last year because, oh, I was recovering from COVID. <laughs> so I did a lot of sewing over um, the holidays and I used up a lot of my slightly used needles. Um, so my my pad is practically empty now. So keep this in, in, in mind, so. Okay, we have just covered a lot of information. Oh, Pam says, we love our, our MyPad because it has every needle type. Yeah, that's right. The other one, the previous one um, had just a few uh, popular needle types, but I said, come on, we've got the space. <laughs> and uh, people have more than just a few needle types. So it's all the different needle types now. So, okay, uh, Pam, do you have any more questions? There we go. I was just going to ask 
everybody who's on today, what is their favorite needle type? Good question. Yeah, what's your favorite needle type? Go ahead and put that in the chat. Or actually, if you want to unmute, and I'm okay with unmuting, if you just want to say, hey, I'm uh, Jane, my favorite needle type and size is. Don't be bashful. There's no wrong answers. Maybe you love uh, universal needles, and that's great. I like piecing with the jeans size 70 myself. Oh, oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. My favorite uh, needle for piecing is uh, Microtex, Microtex 8012. But I will tell you, even though that's my favorite, I was working on a quilt uh, through my local quilt shop a few years ago, and I only sew at night <laughs> when it's dark, right? And um, <laughs> And anyway, the um, I'm thinking my stitches are a little bit wonky. And I thought, what's going on here? Because it was a fresh needle. So I used another Microtex 8012 and I still didn't like um, the way my machine sounded and it was uh, fully maintained. So I went down a needle size to a Microtex 7010 and voila, sewed like butter. So, you know, it's not like days past when there was just one or two or three fabric manufacturers doing a certain kind of fabric. But now we have a plethora of different fabric manufacturers. They use different dyes, different textures, different weaves. So what your favorite needle is may work. And sometimes you have to make an adjustment. So it's good to have a, a variety of needles. So Jerry's saying um, Universal 8012, fantastic. Diane likes the Universal and um, Microtex. Sally uses Microtex either size 7010 or 8012. Yeah, good, good. So um, yeah, there's a needle for everyone. <laughs> And, you know, with all this crazy weather that we've had, because I know you guys, I'm in the Chicago area, and, you know, they say, oh, it's going to snow. They, they put out all the warnings. And at least in my area, where we haven't, even, we've barely even had a dusting of snow the past few weeks, go probably 30 miles north of me. And that's a, you know, they've had measurable snow. But when it's um, so snowy, and I know that you're in um, northern Michigan, um, what it, I always say, snow weather is so weather. So <laughs> we're still in sewing weather. But now that I think of it, um, all weather is sewing weather. <laughs> okay. Well, Pam, I guess that's it for questions. Um, unless you have something else, I'm looking forward to seeing you in Fort Worth, Texas mm -hmm. at Bernina University. And um, I'll be giving a class there too. Um, yeah, I got my reservations all made. Yeah, so. yeah, me too. <laughs> and I might have a new needle announcement at BU. We'll see oh. how it all works out. So you'll want to okay. stay tuned. Good, good. Great. You know, well, if anybody is wondering about those needle bundles, you can just go to timeflyscoltonsew.com and type in Schmetz bundle in the search. And that's the easiest way to find the bundles that we have out there. And the yeah. pad is called my pad. So you can search for that as well. So I right. appreciate so, everybody tuning in. Yeah. And you know, the, um, these little bundles, if you have a favorite needle, but you haven't really strayed from that, this is a great way to expose yourself to a variety. Think of it as a sampler pack. So it's an easy way to get your needles um, along with this handy little chart and then the uh, ABC pocket guide, which, you know what, let me just do a quick walkthrough on, on this. There's now an index and now we have all the different Smith's needle points. The, um, so you can understand that better. We have that diagram about the eyes of the needle. So now you don't have to remember. Of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't include um, clues to change the needle. <laughs> and a reminder of 
what do all those numbers mean on your little Smets needle pack? So you can review that. Then we have all the different Smets needle types, um, photographs with the different um, sizes, special features, uses, et cetera. So lots of information here. And then at the very back, we have the beginning of an alphabetical list of all the different kinds of fabrics and what needle type and size to use. So some, some recommendations. So you wanna get your hands on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would also point out to those that have Bernina sewing machines, when you touch on the needle on the left-hand side of the screen and way over on the right, there's a needle that has a string around it and that's called the needle minder. It's a reminder for yourself as to what needle you have put into the machine. Kind of works like the MyPad, but I like the MyPad for slightly used needles because there's times where we are switching out from one type of sewing fabric to another. But um, yeah, so anyway, just wanted to remind you all about the needle minder. Yes, fantastic. Well, Pam, thank you so very much. And I want to give a special shout out to each of your customers that are here today and that use Smets needles. I have to say that I never expected to have a job where I would talk about two inches of steel, <laughs> but I love what I do. And I love meeting all of everyone that uses Smets needles. And I love all the dealers that, um, use and sell and promote SMAP. So special thanks to everybody here today. All right. Thank you so much. Have a bye great bye. day, everybody. So a bye. snow day is a so day. I love it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>